I look forward to so that I can, you know, get you the information that I know you came tonight to listen for. So with that introduction, I'll get started. And uh, again, about 30 minutes of, of my slide presentation. As we all know, there are, are emerging trends in cancer care today. Um, many of you are already taking oral agents to treat your cancer. Um, there is an increased use of oral agents, not just in kidney cancer, but across the board for all solid and uh, blood type of malignancies. And what we've seen with these medications is that there is a new side effect profile. The good news is that we have been treating patients for many years now with these medications, so we are quite familiar with what the side effects are, um, and we feel that we have some pretty good techniques and management skills that patients can use to actually decrease the intensity of, of the side effects. We look at cancer today as a chronic disease with an emphasis for all patients to continue with the therapy. Well, as a result of that, patients are living longer, but it does require long-term daily medication. And it also requires patients and their caregivers to not only uh, monitor the medications that they're receiving, but also managing the side effects that I alluded to earlier. And this also puts a, a huge responsibility on the patient because they're taking their medications at, medications at home, they're experiencing the side effects at home, and sometimes not always coming into the doctor's office as frequently as they would have in the past. So again, um, five years ago, all this was very new to all of us, patients and the healthcare team, but I feel confident today that we have really made some headway in these emerging trends in cancer care. Here's a list of some of the uh, treatments that we have to, for kidney cancer today, and I'm happy to share with you five FDA-approved medications. In December of 05, serafinib or Nexavar, as many of you uh, may know of its name, by, approved by Bayer Onyx Pharmaceuticals, and serafinib is an agent that uh, you take orally, everyday dosing. Following that approval was Sinitinib, or Sutent, approved in January of 2006 by um, Pfizer Pharmaceuticals manufacturers Sinitinib. Again, it is an oral agent. Its dosing is a little bit different, generally four weeks of treatment, followed by a two-week break period. Then in May of 07, Temcerolimus was approved, and this drug is manufactured by Wyeth Pharmaceuticals, and it is an intravenous infusion that is given every week. And this slide should not say not FDA approved because bevacizumab is FDA approved. Some of you may know this by the name of Avastin. It is made by, uh, or by Genentech Pharmaceuticals, and this medication is given every 14 days, or what we call biweekly infusions. Let's just go back one slide. And I'm just going to go back because there was a, a medication that is not on here, and that is the medication Affinitor. And that medication is uh, by Novartis Pharmaceuticals. It is also an oral agent. It is given every day. And this particular medication is FDA approved for when patients have either taken sunitinib or Nexavar and have had growth of their tumors, this is the drug that would be approved for their particular uh, cancer. Well, a lot of these medications, um, we, we look at uh, our patient population, and some patients can take these medications very easily, but because there's not a lot of hands-on and uh, sometimes patients are coming back maybe once a month, we're always concerned about compliance issues with any type of oral medication. I have a very diverse population. 
I have patients, you know, well into their 80s. I have young patients. When you get to be a little bit older, sometimes you have some visual problems. Sometimes we're a little bit more forgetful. Or a patient just it doesn't take medications very well. These are all things that can affect medication compliance and whether or not patients are going to indeed take their pills in the manner that they are prescribed. They may have a lack of social and family su support. When somebody comes to the chemotherapy room and gets an infusion of their treatments, of course, it's very helpful to have social and family support. But what, not, when you're getting the infusion, you rely upon the support of the, of the nurse and the, uh, all the different staff in the infusion room. Oral medications require social and family support. Sometimes there are financial limitations. There can be complex treatment regimens, especially when patients are on clinical trials. They can be demanding for the patient and their families. Sometimes we, re we do require patients to come to the medical center a couple times a week if they're having a side effect that we're just not 100% comfortable with. We tell them to come in right away. Medication compliance also depends on side effects. If a patient's experienced something that is very uncomfortable for them, it's real easy not to take that medication when it's in a pill form. So we try to prepare patients and their families for what the side effects are and how to treat them. And I think what is a, a big challenge for all of us is that many patients do not realize that they will be on these medications for long-term therapy. And also, many patients don't get the proper dosing of these medications. So we, we try to, um, again, make sure that they know that they're going to be on it for a long time and it must be taken in this, fa in this particular fashion. And it will require a change in behavior. For some patients that have never taken any type of medication in their entire life, suddenly taking medication perhaps before a meal or with a meal or, you know, with, or having to avoid certain things that they really love in their diet, that's a change in behavior that um, goes along with these oral medications. So how do we try to improve patient compliance? We really stress that patients know their health care team. They know who the doctor is, who the nurse is, who, who their secretary is, who's going to pick up the phone when they call with, when they have a medical problem, and who, who should they ask for. I always stress the importance of follow-up visits so that when you leave your doctor's office, you know when you're coming back. It's very important that you kind of keep this going for eight weeks, for 12 weeks, and that you have kind of future appointments already made so that you know exactly when you're going to be going back. We try to do all types of educational techniques that reinforce learning. Some people like to watch a video. Some people like um, to read things um, on the Internet. We have all sorts of uh, literature that's written because it's so helpful to take something home that's written that you can refer to later on. Communication is important with your family. At the doctor visits, when your when your doctor is giving, nurse is giving you information, or even when someone in the lab or the appointment center gives you information, make sure that when you leave, all of your questions are answered, and that you feel comfortable with what the next step is going to be. Uh, sometimes we uh, patients have to um, be on economic assistance programs uh, in order to get their medications, and the good news is that many of these new medications. We do have um, programs that can assist 